Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. In this video, we will discuss the last problem of Lead Code Weekly Contest 314. It's a high level problem. Um, the problem name is Paths in Matrix whose sum is divisible by K. So the problem statement says that you are given a zero index M into N integer matrix. Let's call it grid and an integer K. You are currently positioned at 0, 0, and you want to reach the position M minus 1, N minus 1 moving only down and right now what we need to do is we need to return the number of paths where the sum of the elements on the path is divisible by k now since the answer may be very large return it modulo 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7 these are some examples i will just show that in the explanation also let's look into the constraints of this problem because that will help us in framing the solution so that the m and n the value can go in up to 5 into 10 raised to the power 4 and also just see m into n uh, the, the, the number of elements can also be 5 into 10 raised to the power 4 right now each value will go up to 100 and also a major thing to note here is the value of k uh, by which we will be testing the divisibility that goes from 1 to 50 right so these things are important i'll tell you how and let's jump into the explanation so the problem is saying you are given a grid Suppose this is the grid, you, st you stand here, this is the starting point, this is the destination, you want to move from here to here and at every step you can just perform two types of operations, you can either move right or you can move down, right? So like if I show you one of the paths then you can move like this, right? If I just show you another path, so you can move like this, this 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 and this what could be another path you can move like this let me just change the color let's take yellow you can move like this you go here you go here you go here you go here so there can be many paths obviously uh, that that will be a different problem i'll not discuss that uh, however that if you guys are familiar with that it will be much more helpful right so it says that you can move you have to move from here to here and at every point you can either move right or you can move down right so if you guys have heard about uh, that type of problem where we need to find the number of paths number of possible paths where we can move uh, uh, number of possible paths of reaching the destination from source where we can move uh, where we can move in the right direction or down direction if you have heard that uh, then that's a trivial problem right it basically tells that so suppose uh, i'll just give you an insight of that so suppose this is my grid right this is my grid suppose i want to calculate the number of ways i can reach the, this position right i can reach this position now just see i started from here suppose somehow i come here i want to calculate the number of ways forget about divisibility for now right now in how many ways can i reach this destination sorry th this index so either it says you can either move right or you can move down so that means if i'm standing here i can move from here to here or if i'm standing here i can move from here to here if i want to reach here i can either come from top or i can come from life left right this is how you do so suppose the number of ways uh, for reaching this index is x Sup, 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 somehow you calculated this value as x somehow you calculated this value as y so the number of ways of reaching this index is x, 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 com, x plus y right you reached here and then you moved here in one step you reached here and you moved it one step so that so that is the basic concept right uh, i would say um, this is more of a dynamic programming thing that you calculate some values here instead of recalculating it and to to, to know the number of ways for reaching a particular index you see that okay what are what are the values that i have calculated for my previous indices in this case this index and this index right basic stuff now an additional thing that the problem is saying is you don't have to count the raw number of paths that uh, that are uh, there for, to reaching uh, to reach destination from the starting point no that's not the case you have to find the number of paths who which when you traverse you get a particular sum because every ind every every um, index has a value right so when you move from source to destination what is the sum of your value suppose that is s so if that that s is divisible by k then that is a valid path right so among all the path that is there from source to destination 
विच एवर पाथ हैज अ सम विच इज डिविजल बाई के दैट इज अ वैलिड पाथ फॉर मी एंड वी नीड टू रिटर्न द नंबर ऑफ वैलिड पाथ मीन्स इट इज नॉट शोइंग द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट डजेंट शो डजेंट राइट दैट इट्स अ वैलिड पाथ बट या जस्ट फॉर सिंप्लिसिटी सो वी नीड टू फाइंड द नंबर ऑफ पाथ फ्रॉम सोर्स टू डेस्टिनेशन Uh, such that the sum of the numbers on that path is divisible by k. That's what the problem is saying, right? Now, as I told you, as I told you that, uh, as I gave you this example, let's just visualize it and extend it. That how can we solve this problem, right? So suppose this is my grid, right? Suppose this is my grid. I also told you we should consider, we should, we should take care of the constraints. Now the constraints were k. That means this number can go up to fifty, can be less than equal to fifty. That means I can have fifty possible values if I take uh, mod of any number by k. It can be zero to fifty, zero to forty nine. Sorry, zero to forty nine, right? It can be zero to forty nine. Why? So if there is any number n and you take its mod by k, so what are the possible remainders that you can get? You can get zero. You can get one up to k minus one. So total k different values you get, right? Simple. So now what I'll do? Just see here. <coughs> so uh, forget about. It. I'll I'll initialize these things. I'll tell you how to initialize this afterward. Again, let's take the case. Suppose I want to calculate the values here. Now what are the values that I want to calculate? So just see here. You do not want to calculate the raw paths, right? Here I want to calculate the paths with whose sum is divisible by uh, k. So what I can do? Since the value of k is less, I can uh, for every index what I can do, I can calculate the number of paths ending here. Suppose for this index, number of paths ending here, whose remainder when divided by k is zero, whose remainder when divided by k is one, whose remainder when divided by k is goes up to k minus one. That means. For every index, instead of storing just one value, you store k values. And what do those k values represent? Those k value represents that. Okay, when I started from here, and when I reached here, then how many paths were there? So, so suppose there are n n paths. So among those n paths, how many of them uh, have a sum such that when divided by k they give me a remainder of zero. When divided by k they give me a remainder of one, and so on till k minus one. If I if I calculate this, then just see here. When I reach here, all I need to do is I need to return the value that I have calculated that the number of paths from re, uh, to reach this this index from this index whose sum is divisible by k will already be calculated, right? I'll just return the zeroth index. Which I calculated, which I cal the zeroth value, the pre the value present at the zeroth index for this particular index, which I have calculated, right? So that means instead of keeping a single value at every index, you keep a bunch of values, k values. So uh, also, what I have what I have told you, we need to keep this value. So simple stuff. You need an array. Let's call it D P, and the the number of rows are n plus one. Basically n, but but for simple indexing, I am taking n plus one, n plus one, and then take k. Now k lies from zero to k minus one, hence I have done. So finally, what you you will have to return d p of n, d p of m, and zero. This zero represents that number of paths whose sum uh, gave me a remainder of zero when divided by k. Simple stuff, right? Now, why we are keeping these values? That's the main question. Why we are not keeping a single value? We are keeping multiple values. We are keeping k values at every index. Now that is, that is, uh, we are doing it because, suppose, suppose, <laughs> my current sum. Let's forget about this question. Suppose my sum equals to, uh, five, right? My sum equals to five, and I am taking a mod by, eight, or yeah, eight. Let's let's take it, right? So till now my sum is five. So that means. For this, for this, if I calculate my mod with k, here k is eight. Then, for fifth index, I will have a value of one. That okay? The number of paths having sum equals to, uh, having sum such that when divided by k gives me a mod of five, is basically one. The number of paths is one when mod is five. Now suppose my current number, till here I had a sum of five. I move to the next number, and that next number is three. That next number is three. 
so i calculate this sum s becomes 5 plus 3 that is 8 now when i take mod with 8 it gives me 0 so that means for this new index for this new index actually what has happened the thing that has happened is here here just just consider two values this is the matrix right here it has 5 here it had 3 if you just consider this value then your mod uh, when you when you take mod by k the value the remainder 5 uh, was received one times but when you came here your sum changed and the remainder that you got zero uh, was you got it one time right and you did not get a remainder of five here you cannot do that five was here but you cannot get it here because you have taken a sum right simple stuff so that is what we are doing when we come here we are dependent on the previous k values values present here and values present here so what i do i basically see what was the previous value there can be k k value 0 to k minus 1 now what do you do you add suppose these are rep, uh, these are represented by a variable w so you do w plus the current value let's call it grid of i comma j this is the current value take its mod by k what you will get you will get a remainder a new remainder and you just increment your count for the current remainder simple stuff and that is what you do for all the possible value values of w and that is uh, 0 to k minus 1 because actually uh, there is a possibility now that for one index what has happened uh, you 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 got different values you got different remainders and as soon as you added a new value you got different remainders so your count will change right here the count of uh, remainder 5 was 1 but here actually the count of remainder 0 is 1 the count of remainder 5 has become 0 because we are dependent on the previous value right so that is the step that we'll be doing now i told you how to initialize this so just for making code simpler and avoiding some checks what i have done if you start from here then just see now how many what are the possible ways you can reach this index so only this is the possible way right this is the possible way and if i talk so this is for the first row and if i talk about the first column as well the only possible path is moving from top to down right so just calculate the k different values like whatever i was telling you calculate the value for the first row and first column beforehand and then then basically run a nested loop to make the code simpler let me just explain you with the help of a code right so yeah just see this on line number three and four i have taken uh, the length of the grid and the width of the grid mod equals to the value with with which i need to take the mod and on line number seven just see what i have done i have taken an array to basically store the values and the size of the array is n plus 1 m plus 1 and k k will be remain as it is because i can have k different values n and m i have done is i have taken the uh, size of dp one extra just because to avoid that that checks that if i equals to zero and and that right so just for that indexing becomes simpler uh, now just see on line number 10 to 12 i am doing it for the first column initially sum equals to zero and then what i am doing as i told you the only path will be to move from top to down so what do you do you start from grid of 0 comma 0 then you move grid of 1 comma 0 and so on so on line number 12 what i am doing dp of i plus 1 comma 1 comma sum now what is sum i just see the remainder that i am getting i have just incremented my count similarly on line number 14 i have reinitialized my array <coughs> sorry i have reinitialized my array that is grid of 0 comma 0 now one thing to note here is the first value in the grid should not be computed twice so that is why on line number 10 you can see i have started from 0 however on line number 15 i have started from 1 when i calculate the uh, values for the topmost row because for grid 0 comma 0 i have already calculated it right so no need to recalculate it otherwise you will get extra values right you will get, get just the double values one for row one for column so no need for that and then i have done it on line number 17 i have done the same thing uh, let's come to the core logic on line number 20 you can see 2021 20, i am running a nested loop um, for all the rows and columns and on line number 22 you can see i am running a loop of w goes from 0 to k all the possible remainders that i can get now on line number 23 what i am doing current sum equals to the remainder the current remainder that i am considering that is w plus the current value that i have at, at this particular index then i take the remainder now what is my current remainder my current remainder is cursum and then what what i do to calculate the current sum 
with the help of which values did i calculate it by the current sum by the help of w that means consider the uh, left and top indices with remainder w so what i have done on line number 24 and 25 dp of i plus 1 j plus 1 current sum that is the current remainder equals to dp of i so again in one case you 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 consider the top value and one case you consider the left value right so first what i have done i've can i've considered the left value you can see the dp of i plus 1 and j on line number 24 so that means i move one column one column left and on line number 25 you can see i have moved one row up and then finally you take the mod remember taking mods because your value can overflow so on the both the lines i have taken the mod and finally this keeps on running for all the uh, values in my grid and finally on line number 29 i return dp of n m and 0 so yeah this was a good problem to solve why a good problem because uh, this was an e extension of the trivial problem that you get related to this concept right moving from the top topmost uh, index to the uh, bottom most index so an extension of it and i would say a good extension and the point to note here is the constraints helped us to solve this problem because k was going from 1 to 50 so we knew that okay i need to traverse each and every possible value so my time complexity for this one will be big o of n into m into k and that is not gonna uh, give me tle because in the constraint it says m into n can go up to 5 into 10 raised to the power 4 and if i take into 50 then that is sort of 25 into 10 raised to the power 5 and that's pretty simple to run within a second or so right so yeah i hope you learned something new from this video please do support it by giving a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel it helps me keep motivated also in case you have any queries do mention that into the comments i'll be more than happy to revert on each one of them also if you want to connect you can connect with me on linkedin the link is mentioned into the description thank you take care bye bye